So before opening it up to, um, uh, to discussion, I want to mention doing the kind of intervention that I've been implying the whole time. Oh, do 3% three, 3 here. Oh, change from uh, Southern diet to a non-Southern diet. Then what happens in an at-risk population if you try to implement things like this? This is our ACC AHA um, nutrition uh, prevention guideline, nutrition section in the prevention guidelines. And you know, many people were upset when, because it had fish. Well, the reason it had fish in it, in addition to more vegetables, fruits, nuts, uh, beans, and whole grains, was because that was randomized trial evidence, uh, in this case, stroke. Um, and so no question about it, that fish is a substitutionary benefit um, for some conditions, particularly stroke. But the rest of the document is pretty solid. We should be getting rid of saturated fat. We should re be reducing cholesterol and sodium in the diet. We should be getting rid of completely um, processed meat, refined carbohydrates and sugar sweetened beverages and artificially sweetened beverages uh, to reduce our cardiovascular risk. Uh, trans fats, we don't have to worry about so much. I didn't even talk about them when it was on the slide before because they're illegal in the United States, along with um, uh, Switzerland and Denmark. Okay, so what we tried to do is um, uh, an intervention in our African American community, um, in, a, in churches where we, where uh, President Obama used to go. Um, we uh, published this uh, in abstract form. And this is the data. The TMAO and insulin levels, two chemicals that after hearing all these talks, I'm sure you know we're, we fear them. They both were reduced over a five week period by 43%. But the cholesterol got better, the inflammation got better, the weight, the blood pressure, uh, sugar, all of them got better. LP little a, if you haven't heard of that, it's that little uh, genetically determined um, uh, a molecule that is a lipoprotein, but is similar to um, plasminogen and ends up um, causing more clots. And so it turns out that even that, which isn't supposed to be diet responsive, they say, it, that went down 10%. So the bottom line is we were, we were able to improve the risk of folks uh, significantly. And uh, our completion rate was pretty high. Adherence to the diet uh, having food delivered to them and sticking with it uh, was actually pretty high as well. And uh, we had just marked improvement in, in the risk when we plugged in the second set of uh, uh, data into the risk calculator, we saw that the risk had gone down by 19%. That's a, almost all of the 21% increase that African-Americans have in this country. Um, so I would take this opportunity for those of you who um, are trying to figure out how do you do this uh, to push the Association of Black Cardiologists uh, vegan cookbook that came out last year. A very nice tool, you can download it for free and email it to people and uh, been giving this out, trying to get people to do more plants and less animals. So in summary, uh, we still are living in a dual pandemic. We need to advocate for risk factor reduction. We need to try and talk with our Congress people, um, our local food folks, label foods as dangerous when they are, um, promote more fruits and vegetables. Uh, let's, uh, let's really be advocates uh, for health. If we decrease the obesity and diabetes and this, this cacophony of cardiovascular risk factors and end results, the hypertension, uh, heart failure, stroke and death, and heart attack. We can actually improve microbiomes left and right and get through both the pandemic of COVID-19 uh, as well as coronary heart disease, uh, stroke and death. 